everyone and welcome to my Thor reading vlog. So this week Thor Love and Thunder comes out and as we all know Thor Love and Thunder is based on the Jason Aaron Thor run. So what I'm going to be doing this week is reading the entire Jason Aaron Thor run. So this is going from the original um, Thor all the way through Mighty Thor into Original Sin into um, King Thor and then also War of the Realms and Jane Foster Valkyrie. I'm not going to go through the full reading list here in terms of like the order that they're going in. What instead I'm going to do is leave a link down below to my reading order on my website, the Comic Book Sanctum, which has all of these types of things, which is just gonna save time and you can read it there essentially or just follow along in this vlog essentially. But this is what I'm gonna be reading. It's a lot of comics, it's 22 in total, but totally worth it because this series is seriously hyped. I've heard so many good things about it and this is also Obviously the basis for Thor Love and Thunder in terms of Jane lifting the hammer and also Gold the God Butcher, this kind of thing. So I am very, very excited to read this and also I will be reviewing the movie in this vlog as well when I see it on Thursday. What I will say though is that it may be spoilers, it may be spoiler free, I don't know yet. Either way I will leave massive spoiler warnings like before I start talking about it and I will have a timestamp for if you want to skip that bit and things like this if I do talk spoilers but for now let's get going on this giant stack so I'm going to start here with the complete collection which is the first 18 issues of the Thor run so let's get going I'm a little bit scared because it's a bit big but and it's a massive series, but either way, I'm going to start going with the complete collection and update you once I have read a bit of it. I'm about three issues in so far, really, really enjoying this, but I just want to point out this panel right here with this dead god who is called Falagard the Behemoth. So, what's interesting about this panel, this giant panel, is that this is actually in the Thor trailer. This is actually shot for shot the same in the Thor trailer as it is in this comic right here. The only difference is that next to Thor in the trailer is Kor, but everything else is exactly the same. So that makes me really excited to see where this is going to go, especially if Taika is taking entire shots from the comics and putting it in the film. This is going to get brutal. If I think, like, if Taika's taken that, shot alone i'm just wondering what else he's going to take i'm very excited to see what else he's going to take from this if we're going to see old man thor young thor because this is sort of jumping between like um the 800 ad if i remember rightly and thor has been the last god left as an old man so and it was like the now time as well so i'm wondering if thor's going to have met gore before that rhymed i didn't mean for that to rhyme if Thor had met Gore the God Butcher in the past, that's what I'll go with. But I'm gonna wonder if that's what happened in the film as well. It's happened in the comics, but interesting start. Very interesting, very gory. This is a much more gory and bloody than I was expecting, but I am really liking this so far. So I've just finished the first seven issues in this one and I really am enjoying this. I'm loving seeing the um, past with Gore the God Butcher, the current present time as well as the future timeline. I'm loving seeing like his interactions with Thor as well as why he's doing this. I completely understand where Gore is coming from because of just this one flashback finding out about like his wife, his children, his mother, all the rest of it and why he hates the gods so much. I'm really liking all of these like interactions and fight scenes. I will say that the fight scenes are a little bit confusing to read at times because Gore's got some sort of like um like tentacly sort of venom type things. I know it's sort of going that way because I know that he's got um a weapon from Null who is the sort of god of the symbiotes. I know that's coming um for various reasons if I remember rightly um so I know that's that kind of thing but I do wish that that had been more explained or made more clear because at the moment we don't really know much about it and it's just making the fight scenes just that little bit confusing to watch 
oh, like read. But apart from that, I'm really loving this, and I'm loving the fact that Gore is building a massive bomb to kill all the gods. Like that is a massive plot twist. I love seeing like how he's like taking control of things and like the different things he's doing to like take control and kill the gods. I'm also loving the exploration of the gods as well and seeing more of the other gods of the Marvel Universe including like this giant library where the nexus of gods is. I'm really liking seeing all of that and exploring, it, albeit briefly, all of these different types of immortal beings of the Marvel Universe that we don't usually follow because we're usually following like Thor and like the Olympians, the Asgardians, those types of people. So it's nice to see some of the others as well. And I'm kind of regretting not having read this sooner because this is really good fun. I'm really enjoying this so far and I don't want to put it down, but it's now lunchtime, so I've got to put it down. But I really don't want to. So I've just finished issue 11. I'm about to go into issue 12 and they seemingly have just defeated Gore, but I don't believe that's happened because I've still got well six issues left of this one i mean some of this is like artwork and stuff at the end but then there's the rest of that and i know obviously it's going into like unworthy thor and jane foster and all the rest of it but i'm like i don't believe that was it because i mean gore was such a massive villain and even though it took three thors i still don't trust that he's dead i don't trust that he's dead what i will say though is i do wish i'd seen more of like the other gods fighting i understand why they didn't do that but i would have liked to have seen a bit more of that and also seeing the three of them together reminded me a lot of the 50th anniversary of doctor who where you've got david Tennant, matt smith and also john hurt playing the three separate doctors and it was sort of like the three of them sort of teaming up together to try and stop this thing like the destruction of their people essentially and then seemingly succeeding but then also they're all going to go their own separate ways and then forget what happened because of time travel and things like this and that just reminded me a lot of that which i really liked also there's a lot of like gore in this not like gore the god butcher but gore is in blood and all the rest of it and i'm just like I don't know if Tyker's going to go down that route because from what I've seen so far Tyker doesn't usually do that much like blood in things. I could be entirely wrong here but I'm like I don't know if that would fit in with the vibe of this but at the same time I'm totally here for it if it works and if anybody can make it work it's probably Tyker Waititi so very excited to see if he does go down that proper like gory route with like pegasus is being like beheaded and things like this i won't show it for um in case anybody's triggered by something like that with like animal death and things like this but i wonder just how dark tyke is gonna go with this movie because this is a pretty damn dark collection which is including obviously like i said animal death slavery attempted genocide murder people's like dead bodies being hung from trees and things like this as like warnings and things like this so I'm just wondering how dark this film's gonna go and I'm so excited to find out I am so excited to find out so it's the next day and I have now finished the Jason Aaron complete collection and also the last days of Midgard and these are the first two bits in this Thor run and I really liked these I really liked the like dual timelines that we got so we got like young Thor before he was worthy the Thor of now who's like the Avenger Thor and then old man Thor and seeing like really Thor's connection to Earth and how much he loves Earth and getting like these hints at Jane because at this point Jane is ill so it's sort of like oh yeah I know like this is where it all kicks off for her um we've also seen a lot of like the dark elves as well which was really nice because my only sort of thing that I've seen of the dark elves is Thor Dark World which I actually watched last night funnily enough um so it was really fun sort of comparing those to the film version to these uh, like to the comic version um, I really liked as well seeing like um, Thor's granddaughters as well they were really fun I really liked them and like the hints of what's to come with unworthy Thor and things like this and I really really like these I think I'm going to give both of these four stars I will say the artwork at points is not my favourite I prefer like the artwork in the main section and not the like this section at the end here is not my favourite but I've also got to mention as well I really like the environmental message in this one as well I didn't expect that because um, Thor is dealing with Roxxon Corporation who are literally 
basically t trying to destroy the world through environmental means just to make money and then because Thor tries to stop them, the CEO tries to stop him essentially and it felt very on the nose and very sort of timely for the world we live in now so I really like that element of it as well I did also like Roz as a character who is a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who's part of the environmental um division of S.H.I.E.L.D. which is a brand new division and her and Thor have a bit of a thing I kind of don't want them to have a thing I kind of just want them to be friends because I don't think all female characters need some sort of like love story to go with it um with like their main storyline I don't think that's needed but apart from that I do really like Roz as a character I love her interactions with Coulson as well I'm always here for Coulson though so that's unsurprising but overall I really like this series and now I'm going to be going on to Original Sin I've got to read the Original Sin Thor and Loki first and then I can go on to this big one and that's probably about as far as I'm going to get today unfortunately and then I need to go on to if I quickly check my own reading guide because I'm literally using that right so then it goes on to Original Sin, Original Sin, Thor and Loki and then I need to go on to Mighty Thor which is where Jane lifts the hammer so I think I'm going to be reading Jane lifting the hammer tomorrow and then also trying to get onto Unworthy Thor, Mighty Thor, the Asgard Shi'ar War, and then also the Thor God of Thunder stuff. I don't know if I'm going to get to War of the Realms. I've got a bad feeling I'm not going to get to War of the Realms this week, but we'll see. As long as I get through up until um, the God of Thunder Reborn, or at, like, well, at the very least if I get to God of Thunder Reborn, I'll be quite happy. But I want to get through the most, like all of this by the end of Friday so I can upload this vlog but I feel like this vlog may end up going up on Monday so I have time to finish it all I don't know but either way very excited to finally read Original Sin and just maybe get to the first one of Jane lifting the hammer but I've blog posted right first so should probably get on with that and then see how many I do but either way I will update you once I've read Original Sin and I'll go from there. So I'm currently four issues in I think I'm about four issues in yeah I'm just starting issue four these are chunky issues more than usual but I'm really liking this I mean first of all I've got to say that Sam Alexander is the sweetest kid because he's like always going up to the watcher for like a chat and things like this and he actually brings him a bit of rock from like a famous Avengers battle as like a souvenir for the watcher he's like I don't know if you collect stuff but here and I'm like Sam you are the cutest thing I love him I'm hoping we see him in the MCU soon because I think he'd be a great addition to like our new teen Avengers I think he'd get along great with Kamala and people like this but Anyway, I so love that bit of this, along with like the mystery of just who has killed the Watcher, what they're doing, why they're killing so many other people, how they've done it, how they've worked out how to do this, things like that. I'm pretty sure I do actually know who killed the Watcher though, because I've read other things and stuff that are set like after this, so I sort of know at this point, which kind of sucks, because I wish I didn't know, but at the same time, I'm still really, really enjoying this. I'm really loving seeing all of these different characters that are being put together here. So you've got people like Thor, and uh, well, Thor's actually disappeared at this point because I need to read um, Tenth Realm, which is the tie in with Thor and Loki finding out about Angela. But you've got like Winter Soldier teaming up with Moon Knight and Gamora. Um, people like this are all sort of working together in like different little teams and things like this, which I find really fun, really interesting. I'm just genuinely really, really loving this. What I'm going to be doing is finishing the original, original sin, which is eight issues long. Okay, then, and then I'll be turning on the, um, like tablet so I can read Tenth Realm which I own um in a like Kindle format. I'm supposed to read it after like the second issue but I don't want to put this down so I'm just gonna continue this instead and like get past the original original sin before I go on to original sins which is the final um five issues in this and then I'll read the final um issues and then I think that'll probably be me done for the day to be honest but 
I am loving this. I am really loving this so far. I've now gone through Original Sin. I do have Original Sins to read, but this is a bunch of one-shots that do not have anything to do with Thor, so I'm going to be leaving these for later in the month so I can get through the rest of it. I have also now just read the Thor and Loki Original Sin tie-in as well, which is called Tenth Realm, which is following um, Thor and Loki trying to get their sister back, Angela, who they didn't know existed for a while. Um, that was very, very interesting. I will say was slightly confusing because I was just slightly confused as to where the connection came from with Odin and the angels who are the ones who have um, Angela things like this so I would have liked a bit more like explanation there but overall I really enjoyed it I would have liked to have seen maybe a bit more of like the um so like what happens afterwards and how everybody feels about this because the family is still separated but they now all know that they exist so I would have liked to have seen a bit more of that but overall I really like this and like the revelations and everything else. Um, I really like all of the stuff to do with the Watcher. I will say though that this was a little bit confusing as well in terms of why the killer of the Watcher did what they did and things like this so I would have liked a bit more explanation there as well but I did really enjoy the twist of turns of this, how it built up but the murderer's character a bit more in terms of like who they are, why they do what they do, what they've been doing all of this time, things like this. I found all of that really interesting and I generally really enjoyed this and I did also really like the artwork as well throughout it and I would have possibly liked a few more X-Men because they were mentioned but it was mostly like Avengers and things like this so I would have liked to have seen more of like the X-Men and the Fantastic Four being involved but apart from that I still, was, still think this was really good and to be fair if they had brought in those characters as well this would have gotten really really complicated because it would have been so many characters so I totally understand but overall I think I'm going to give this a 3.5 stars and the same for the 10th realm. Now that I've read those ones, I can now go on to, if I can find it, Goddess of Thunder. So this is the first one with um, Mighty Thor, otherwise known as Jane Foster, and very excited that this is the one I've been waiting for. I'm so glad I finally get to get to this one before I see the movie tomorrow. So I'm going to read this and then I'll probably actually update you tomorrow after I've seen the movie. So I'm excited. Let's see the goddess of thunder so excited so i've just read the first one which is goddess of thunder so it's the first one with jane as thor and what i really like about this whole series is that it really shuts down sexism and like homophobia in a lot of places or at least like doesn't give into it because loki is gender fluid in the comics odin's talking about his children he says my son my daughter and my child who is both so I really like that detail of it as well and how like everyone just immediately went right well Loki's presenting as this gender today and started using those pronouns which was really nice and then in Goddess of Thunder we move on to people reacting to Jane or at least a female Thor and Odin predictably is not happy about this because Odin is a sexist twat just the whole point of Odin is just to be a twat, essentially, just, just, just to make things worse on his sheer bullheaded dumbassery. You know, I have never liked Odin, if you couldn't tell. I still don't like Odin. I never will like Odin. Um, in comics or in films, I don't like Odin. Like, don't get me wrong, Anthony Hopkins plays him brilliantly and he's written brilliantly. I just don't like him. And, like, the man is just shouting about it and going, like, she's a thief and not worthy. And it's like, you couldn't even lift up the hammer, you ass. And because he's immediately come out of hiding, he's like, oh, the age of the All Mother has ended. And he's like, um, being really rude to Freya, who is literally his wife and the woman who raised his children and things like this. And he just. He's just immediately just trampling all over the women and Freya's like, I ain't having this and actually goes to Jane or Thor, I should say, like Mighty Thor and warns her about Odin being on the warpath and things like this and she just looks at like Mighty Thor fly off and just goes, I should have lifted that hammer when I had the chance, which I love. I love like Freya's um, constant the whole way through this like... Um, like really hitting home that she is not happy with her husband and she's undermining him and things like this and she's still trying to be in control while he's also trying to be in control i'm really liking that conflict between the two of them and then i also want to point out as well the absorbing man scene because at one point mighty thor as in jane is on um earth and she is 
battling absorbing man and she's saying that she's Thor and everything else and he in this situation is perfectly representing the men who are against this whole storyline in the first place because he says Thor are you kidding me I'm supposed to call you Thor damn the feminists are ruining everything and you want to be a chick superhero fine who the hell cares but get your own identity Thor's a dude one of the last manly dudes left is still left what did you do? Send him to sensitivity training so he'd stop calling Earth Girl wenches. And I really like that because, like, not what he's saying, obviously, but it represents the backlash that Marvel clearly knew they were going to have from this storyline so well. I really like that. I really like that then Jane literally just kicks his ass, right, th hits him, breaks his jaw and goes... That's for saying feminist like a four letter word, creep, and I love that. And I love that then Absorbing Man's wife also basically gives Jane a free pass, essentially going, look, like, girls stick together, this is the only time I'll give you a free pass, but girls stick together here and my husband is wrong, essentially, which I really like. I really like that they are battling against that kind of thing. I mean, it's sort of ruined by the fact that um, Tatiana is basically wearing a leotard with most of her boobs out but it's the conversation is good I think the costumes could work better I mean admittedly the mighty Thor costume if I can get a proper picture of it is better than that there we go so we've actually got a cover of Thor being topless and he is topless for most of this whereas like Jane is fully covered up apart from her arms so in that sense I'm really glad they didn't make Jane's costume like really revealing or anything like this like with Angela's costume which looks like that which is essentially just underwear and a giant belt and knee high shoes so in that sense I'm really glad about that I'm really liking the feminist leaning in this one in a lot of ways as well and I'm just generally really liking this and I think I'm going to give this one four stars as well it's a really good start i do not have time to read any of the others though today but really good start cannot wait to continue tomorrow I'm so so excited to go on to the who holds the hammer actually and i don't own that one physically so that is a kindle job but very excited ridiculously excited cannot wait seriously cannot wait i am now back from seeing thor love and thunder and this is going to be completely and utterly spoiler free but if you do not want to hear even spoiler th free thoughts which i completely understand i will put a timestamp here so you can just skip to that bit if you just want to hear about the comics but i loved this movie not as much as multiverse of madness but i am biased towards multiverse of madness to be fair because it's multiverse of madness but this was an absolutely incredible movie i loved how funny it was in a lot of places i love how like taika it was like sometimes i can find taika hit or miss with this stuff but this time was a pure hit it also reminded me a lot of ragnarok if you do not like ragnarok you're not probably gonna like love and thunder if you liked ragnarok you're gonna really like this one which i think is really good i really enjoyed jane's storyline as well in this one i love how they brought her back i loved how it, it like she had a very very similar costume to what she does in the comics um i really liked um that storyline i did also like seeing how it diverged from the comics as well i mean i'm only up to goddess of thunder i've literally got this open at the moment so i can read thunder in her veins but i really liked how closely it did follow the storyline in a lot of places while also diverging in several places as well because the plot did um diverge quite a bit from the original god the god butcher and all the rest of it but i still really like that i still really like the female empowerment of it i really like seeing valkyrie again valkyrie is always one of my favorite characters so i'm always happy to see more valkyrie i love seeing the lgbtqia plus representation in here i think there could have been a bit more and it could have been made a bit more prominent especially considering valkyrie is bisexual i think um we could have seen a bit more there on that front but overall i did really really enjoy this one i really like where it's left thor as a character what it's done to his character things like this i think also all of the actors absolutely killed it christian christian bale was an incredible gore the god butcher i think he did a really good job of being really creepy really scary in places while also being like a really believable and slightly sympathetic villain in a lot of ways as well my only small little thing is that i do wish we had seen more of valkyrie and also more of jane and those types of characters i wish we'd seen a few more of the female characters 
just more and just seeing them interacting things like this and also I would have liked to have seen Loki but I am a Loki nerd so what can I say um I'm just but at the same time I'm glad he didn't appear in the end credit scene you will know what I mean when I say the final end credit scene I'm glad he wasn't there but at the same time I still um wish we had seen Loki a little bit somewhere not just in my like, flashback that we've already seen before in previous movies but apart from that I did really enjoy this one I really loved it and it's definitely one of the best Thor movies as I always expected and now it's time to read Thunder in Her Veins and maybe get a couple of others done before I go for round two of seeing Thor tonight. So I'm gonna get on with it so I can actually get some reading done. Okay, I haven't even started reading Who Holds the Hammer. I did not mean Thunder in a Veins, I meant Who Holds the Hammer. I just need to talk about this alternate cover with like Jane's face on the outside. There's like the silhouette and then a whole load of female characters inside of it. I think that looks amazing. I absolutely love that. I think it's really cool. I really like that image. That's a really fun image. I'm glad someone drew that. That looks really cool. So I've been reading all day and I've finished another like three or I'm on my third. I've lost count but I'm currently reading the Asgard Shi'ar War and I just wanted to point out something here. We've just gone to Quentin Quire who's one of the X-Men. Right and it just says Quentin Quire, a mega level telepath, reluctant X-Men and he's on Krakoa. Like when it's just an island it goes Krakoa, sentient island, also an X-Men. X-Men are weird. Which I just think sums it up perfectly because the X Men are incredibly weird, and I love that they did that. And I love that he's also drawing a Wolverine head there. I just find that very funny. But at the same time, the only things I'm really thinking of is also the artwork in here is stunning. I'm still loving seeing everything that Jane's doing as well as Thor and seeing like Thor's point of view in Unworthy Thor as he's teaming up with Beta Ray Bill and like trying to rescue um like Asgard the original Asgard from the Collector things like this and the Collector is a lot more evil shall we say in the comics than he is in the film so I really like seeing that and seeing Thor's like thought progression and how he's dealing with the fact that he isn't worthy anymore and all the rest of it I'm also just generally enjoying Jane's badassery and the fact that she's just like no it's not Lady Thor it is Mighty Thor and she's just kicking ass while also being Jane Foster as well and like flicking back and forth between the two while also trying to fight cancer and how many like so many other things as well I also really like as well that um she's revealed her identity to Roz I think she really did need to reveal her her identity to somebody and I'm very glad that it was Roz and we didn't go down like the girl hate bit because Jane is Thor's ex and Roz is sort of Thor's sort of girlfriend in a weird sort of maybe way essentially so I'm really glad that that didn't go into girl hate things like this and I'm just generally really enjoying this and I don't I don't talk about it enough for a vlog but I'm gonna blame the fact that I am tired today is Yauk and I'm not there and I'm sad about it and also I'm in the middle of a heat wave and my brain is melting so I'll hopefully do better in the next couple of days when I finish the series but we'll see how things go. I'm having a bit of a wet hair don't care kind of day because England's in the middle of a heat wave and I don't want to dry my hair in that but anyway I have now just finished the War 4 which is another one obviously in this series and I really like this one I really like seeing Volstag in this one lift the hammer I think also the artwork was really fun in here as well seeing like Jane fight Volstag because obviously the two of them have been really good friends for ages now and when Volstagg becomes the war for because of what happens in this one specifically he sees children burning and dying so please be warned about that he becomes war for by picking up the Milnior from the war it wasn't War of the Realms because that's what this is leading to. Give me two seconds. I'm literally going through my own reading guide <laughs> to remember it all because there's a lot. Battle World and Secret Wars. That's it. He got that from there and now he's taken over that and it was really fun seeing those two fight with each other as well as seeing Thor's reaction as well to finding out that Jane is mighty Thor things like this and also Odin continues to be a massive twat because I know I say this a lot but I'm not going to count this as spoilers by the way because this was released in 2015 but dude has a thing with the phoenix I swear, if there's a way to make things worse, Odin finds it and does it every single time. I blame Odin for everything, quite frankly. I always blame Odin for everything, but Odin is a massive twat, as I have learned. 
over the years more and more and more essentially without doubt odin is my least favorite character of basically all of marvel apart from thanos he's literally up there with thanos because i hate him so much but anyway that's that one done and now i'm going on to the death of mighty thor which is you know not fun i think i know how this one ends and then it's on to god of thunder reborn War the, a road to war the realms and war's end i think and then we go on to no war's end is a tie into war the realms so then i'm going to go on to war the realms but this wrong's got to be up tomorrow at time of filming so i need to hurry up so i'm gonna try and blast through as much as physically possible and get to war the realms so i can just blast through that so i can get through into um, Wards and King Thor and then Valkyrie Jane Foster so got a lot more to go but really enjoying this still really love the series I really love the artwork Jason Aaron is very quickly becoming one of my favorite comic book authors and all of that good stuff so get on to the death of mighty Thor pretty sure Jane dies in this one so not gonna be fun but there we go can we just appreciate here the fact that they've started drawing Loki, especially in this series, to look like Tom Hiddleston. I find that really fun. I don't know if... I can't be the only one who sees Tom Hiddleston there. Am I? He definitely looks like Tom Hiddleston. I mean, nobody else looks like they're actors, but... That's definitely a bit of Tom Hiddleston there. Definitely. Could be the cheekbones. And the eyes. But that looks like Tom Hiddleston to me, and I find that very amusing. I mean, I always find that amusing, but... I definitely find that amusing right now. So I've now just finished Death of Mighty Thor and this one was like so so good to see like all these battles raging and also having Jane's decision in this one where Thor and everybody finds out and goes no you are going back to that hospital or you will literally die at this point and we're literally at the life and death moment. Mangog has come along who is like the big villain of um like the gods he tries to kill all the gods he's got his sights set on Asgard as well which is obviously terrifying because it's Asgard that's where everybody is is. stakes have never been higher the artwork is amazing throughout this one as well i absolutely love like the artwork in here i will say that this one has a massive trigger warning though for cancer there is a lot of scenes set in the hospital and jane uh, with the effects of her cancer we also see death by cancer i'm not going to count that as a spoiler because this came out in 2015 so it's death by cancer as well so please be warned about that um though jane does come back she is brought back by thor and actually odin on that front i also want to point out that um odin semi redeemed himself in this one by when jane ends up in valhalla um he does go to her and basically says look you did save asgard um you are and you died in battle come to Valhalla you'll be welcome here kind of thing and then he does help Thor bring her back to life again which I think didn't redeem him but it did at the very least sort of give him some level of like not humanity it redeemed him slightly just this amount like he's still a massive twat but at least he did that at least he was nice enough to let Jane into Valhalla and actually help Thor bring her back so there was that but I really really like this one in general I'm loving seeing like all of Malekith stuff as well and also the ending bit with um Thor's grandchildren traveling through time to go back to meet Jane as well I thought was really cool and one of them like actually helping Jane fly again just one final time because Jane wants to fly again because she misses it I thought that was really cool seeing them really look up to Jane I thought all of that was really cool so really happy I read this one it was not as sad as I was expecting it was pretty damn sad to be fair especially like Jane's death scene was really sad but um I still think it was a really good read just be warned of those trigger warnings and also actually throughout this entire series there is a lot of talk of war death of children you actually see the death of children you see war you see starvation things like this so please be warned about all of that kind of thing there's also a lot of talk of like refugees and stuff like this so please be warned with all of that going into it but this was probably one of my favorite volumes so far so i've now just also finished the road to the war the realms and this one's more sort of like backstory and things like this and sort of giving more explanation as to thor and odin's relationship that they've had throughout the years and 
also like all of that kind of stuff also what loki's up to where roz is um how jane is things like this and i found this one really really fun i will say there is a massive warning in here for a father abusing his son from childhood onwards through physical and emotional means so please be warned about that there is a lot of that in here we also have alcoholism as well because odin spends most of this drunk or wanting to get drunk or talking about the fact that he was drunk and he um either wasn't there for thor's birth or he is just too damn drunk to remember it um like they have a lot of fights in this one as well there's a lot of this type of thing so please be warned about that going into it but i think it's a really good look at their relationship and things like this because i think that's a very very important thing to talk about especially with how odin is as a character um i also um on a lighter note i will say that i really loved all of the bits with okoye because okoye turns up in this one along with t'challa they pick up roz and they go take her to wakanda so she can become an agent of wakanda so that was great i also really really enjoyed when frigga or freya i should call her i call her frigga because of the films but when freya turns up and basically actually does a parenting job that odin doesn't do um i found all of that really good as well i really like loki's section as well seeing him sort of like starting to regret things as well as the flashbacks to thor's time on midgard and the first person he ever loved things like this i found all of that really really interesting really good fun and now i go on to the actual war of the realms which i own on kindle so i'm going to be reading war of the realms and then it is War's End, King Thor, and then the final two, which is Jane Foster Valkyrie, and then I'm going to be entirely done, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with myself once I am, because I've been enjoying this far too much. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself, but I'll figure that out once I've gotten there. This is such a fun series. Seriously, I highly recommend it, even with all the trigger warnings. This is such a fun series. So I've now finished uh, War of the Realms and War's End, and I really liked how this whole war turned out. I really liked seeing all the Thors teaming up together, seeing Jane again lift that hammer one last time, and like her storyline with it. I really like seeing just how they defeated Malekith in the first place, seeing all of the Avengers also teaming up as well to stop the War of the Realms and seeing everybody all trying to do their best to fix all of this. And then also War's End was a really interesting um, bunch of sort of one shots, I guess you could say, for um, loads of different characters. It was really nice to see um, Loki become the king of the frost giants I really like that because it means he's gotten what he's wanted and uh, what he's always wanted I do know that that doesn't end well for him and he gets bored and then he goes on to the what's it called I forgot what it's called this one he goes on to this comic which I have read really enjoyed that one actually but I still really liked his ending in this one I like Thor's ending I love seeing Thor sort of trying to earn um his like king uh, like king status and things like this and not sort of resting on his laurels for this and how far he's come i really liked as well odin's ending because he sort of learnt he hasn't learned he's sort of learned and he's trying to do better things like this and i think it was a really good conclusion of that and now i've only got three comics left i have king thor and then the two jane foster valkyries and then I'm done. I thought I was done after this one and then I just had Jane Foster but I forgot about um, King Thor. So I'm going to get through those two, uh, those three. Probably not tonight. So I'm going to have to hurry up and I'm ironically seeing Thor Love and Thunder again tonight. So I'm not finishing this tonight. This vlog isn't going up tonight either. It's going up on Tuesday now. But that's fine because that gives me time to finish all of this and I need to shut up and carry on reading. So I can finish it on time and because my camera battery is dying so I'm going to go carry on reading those before I go watch Thor. So I've now just finished King Thor and ironically I've left the comic in the car because I was reading it in the car yesterday but I really like this one. It really wrapped up the story really well. I really like where it left Thor, his granddaughters as well as Loki. I think it did that really really well. I also really like that it brought back Gore the God Butcher as like one final fight kind of thing and that kind of thing because I feel like Gore was maybe defeated a little bit too quickly so that was really good to see as well. So I really like that it really sort of wrapped up the whole thing and gave everything like a really good ending. But either way I do have two final 
final comics. These are the Jane Foster Valkyrie, which is the final ones by Jason Aaron. Actually, yeah, no, these are done by Al Ewing, actually, if I remember rightly. And Jason Aaron's involved. But either way, these are the final two in the series that sort of rounds it all off, I think. Actually, these were supposed to be, like, at the start of a new series, but it got cancelled. But never mind, I'm going to read these anyway, because it's the final two I have in this big sort of saga. And then I can finish off this vlog, which is going to be horrendously long. So I'm going to get on with these, and then I'll tell you what I think about them at the end. Okay, so I've only just started volume two, which is the final one, which is at the end of all things. And first of all one annoyance one thing i really want to point out so the annoyance is the fact that at the start of every single issue valkyrie repeats a set of saying um, my name is jane foster i was a doctor i'm a cancer survivor da, 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 da. i'm like i know i'm reading the bind up which is just annoying if it was like at the beginning of each volume that's fine but it's at the beginning of every single issue which is basically a chapter so i'm like why do we have to do this every single time it's slightly annoying but the amusing thing is this bit here so Jane has just gone to Doctor Strange and um, she's saying, did I interrupt your studies? And he goes, I suppose you did after a fashion. I'm learning magic. And she goes, you. And he goes, watch carefully, nothing up my sleeve until I utter the word of power, one that I've never do you dared use in this context before. Abracadabra. And he um, brings out a playing card. And I'm just like, Stephen, you're adorable. <laughs> I mean, I always think Stephen's quite adorable in places, but the fact that he's learning, like, traditional magic in the sense of, like, magic from, like, magic shows, just... I love him. I love him so much. So I've now also officially finished the Jane Foster Valkyrie series. So in all, I think the first volume of this, which is The Sacred and the Profane, was more fun than at the end of all things, because I think this one sort of more explored Valkyrie's job as a Valkyrie, her getting used to being a Valkyrie, that kind of thing. Whereas this one felt more like a series of sort of one-shots that should have been full volumes, but I do understand that the series was getting cancelled so they had to kind of wrap it up a bit quickly but overall it was still fun I think it did sort of give Jane that bit more of um, a storyline and explore more of where she's going further as a character like after she's gone through being Thor and like surviving cancer and all the rest of it I did really like all of that I did also like seeing her team up with people like Doctor Strange things like this fighting her own battles uh, trying to do things outside of Asgard as well and like not being permanently tied to Thor and things like this i also really like seeing her friendship with a paramedic who's actually the ex-girlfriend of america chavez funnily enough so i found that quite fun as well because it was nice to see some female friendship that they didn't just focus entirely on the people that they have dated that was what brought them together in the first place but they did have like interests outside of that they did like helping each other and it was quite girl powered in that sense so i did like that as well i did like the artwork in here as well i did show a little bit but i'll show a little bit more um so we've got like this sort of scenes and things like this which i found very very fun things like this so overall this was a really good time and i'm really glad i read these and i really hope we get something like this for jane in the mcu because i think this would be a really cool thing there's only one valkyrie and i think we could definitely do with more valkyries and things like this in the mcu so i hope these get adapted as well and that marks the end of reading the entire jason aaron thor run from the original um jason aaron thor all the way through original sin through jane foster as the mighty thor through into the war of the realms into jane foster valkyrie so i've now read all of these i will say that this is one of my favorite marvel series i've read i wouldn't say it's as good as say house of m but i am very much biased towards house of m to be honest there's nothing i enjoy more than watching house of m to be fair um reading house of m i mean but this was still a really really good series i really enjoyed it i loved all of the different villains all the different things it explored i will say there is massive trigger warnings in here for cancer death war starvation 
death, uh, there's a lot of death, talk of death, people dying, there's death of children as well, things like this, there's a lot of like depression, alcoholism as well as like um, basically parental abuse um, to their children even when they're adults, things like this, so please be warned about all of that. But if you enjoyed Thor Love and Thunder and you want a slightly darker version or to be fair a fully darker version um, then definitely read this because this is where the entire film came from and you get more from like God the God Butcher Thor being unworthy, Jane becoming Thor and all of that stuff so if you want a more sort of extended version definitely read this or if you didn't like Thor Love and Thunder or if you're just iffy about Thor comics in general I think this is a really good one to go for because you get a lot of stuff in here, there's a lot of moving parts but I think it works quite well and you don't have to have full like Avengers knowledge to go into this one, I think this is quite a good starting point I will say Original Sin is a bit confusing but but apart from that, I'm really struggling to hold this up now, so I'm going to have to try and wrap this up quickly, but I'm dropping things. Right. So, as I was saying, I will say Original Sin is a bit confusing, but apart from that, I think this is a really, really good series. Really, really fun. Really, really interesting. The artwork is amazing. We go through Thor's entire past as well, or we see a lot of his past as well as where he ends in terms of the end of the universe and things like this. So it's a really, really good really worthwhile run and I definitely highly recommend it and I think overall I'm going to give this a four stars I think because some of the artwork was a little bit iffy for me I found it a bit difficult to figure out I think they did hit us over the head with War the Realms is coming quite a lot which was slightly annoying in the sense that I was just like yes I get it War the Realms is coming you don't have to keep on mentioning War the Realms I get it's coming but I totally get it and um also like I said Original Sin is a little bit confusing but apart from that this is highly highly recommended by me and a lot of other people. I think Jason Aaron is becoming one of my favourite comic book authors as well which is not surprising because I've read a lot of his stuff this year and enjoyed all of it and overall I love this series and I think my favourites are probably War of the Realms, King Thor, the original God the God Butcher stuff and the Death of Mighty Thor because that was a really, really good volume as well. And that's where I'm going to end this vlog before I break my wrist trying to hold all of that up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. Tell me what you thought of Thor Love and Thunder, just with no spoilers in case people haven't seen it. Or if you want me to do another themed reading vlog like this, going through an entire run by a certain author, doing like some sort of character or something, please do let me know down below so I can make a start on that and see if I want to do it, all that kind of stuff. Or if you don't have that much time or you've just just stuck it out to the end of this video please leave me a hammer or lightning bolt emoji down below to let me know that you were here i'll also leave a link down below to all my social media if you want to check it out including to the comic books actum which has my full reading guide for what i've just read as well as character profiles and also information about gold the god butcher and everything else that i have just mentioned in this vlog and everything to do with thor love and thunder if you are interested in that and i'll also leave a link as well down below to my etsy and redbubble store which sells bookish merch and bookish bullet journal stuff if you are interested in that or if you just want to see any more of my videos, please click subscribe here. And over here will be the link to my previous video. But until next time everyone, bye!